Okay, so now we have the same charge <coughs> sphere. It has a total charge of Q that is uniformly distributed throughout the sphere. But now, instead of R being outside the sphere, so this is A, the radius of my sphere, R is going to be somewhere inside the sphere. So that would be R. Okay, I still have the charge uniformly distributed. Okay, pretend like those are beautiful little charges that are uniformly distributed. Now I need a Gaussian surface. But that Gaussian surface is inside. Okay, so my Gaussian surface is actually inside the sphere, the insulating sphere. Okay, so let's see. Now my charge enclosed is not equal to the total charge. Right? My charge enclosed is um, some function of the density. So if charge density is the charge enclosed over the volume enclosed, like the volume of our Gaussian surface, then the Q enclosed would be equal to the density times the volume enclosed. And that volume, what's the volume of a sphere? Because it's a Gaussian sphere. Four-thirds pi r cubed, where r is the distance from the center. And so that makes up the r for my Gaussian surface. Okay. All right, so now that I have an expression for the charge enclosed, I can use Gauss's law. So the Gauss's law states that the charge enclosed by the surface over epsilon naught is equal to the closed surface integral of the electric field that's piercing through an area, perpendicular through an area. So rho times 4 thirds pi r cubed over epsilon naught is equal to, now the electric field, again, the electric field that's um, due to the charges inside this um, surface is pointing that way. And our little bit of Gaussian surface area right there is a little bit of the area of a sphere. And they're all nice and the vectors are perpendicular to each other. So then again, this simplifies. 4 pi r squared. Is that all good? Where this r and that r are the same. Yeah. So let's uh, cross out some stuff here that we can divide by on both sides. So it looks like I got a 4 and a pi on both sides, right? And... It looks like an R squared and an R cubed, right? Could cancel out like that. So then what am I left with? That our electric field is equal to rho R over three epsilon naught. Yay. Now, if we have to solve in terms of Q, then we need to make the substitution. Okay, so if we had to solve in terms of Q and rho is equal to um, total Q over V, so that would be Q over 4 thirds pi R cubed, right? Almost messed up. Then we can substitute that in there and have our E is equal to, our electric field is equal to Q R, 3 Q R, right? Over 4 pi R cubed times 3 epsilon naught. That looks like fun. Can we cancel out some of that stuff? A 3 and a 3 and an R and then make that R squared. So fixing my A mistake here 